is Pastor Paul Begley a King James only believer? No, he isn't. I'm going to show you the danger of these people that call themselves Baptist pastors and they say that they use the King James Bible. You can use a King James Bible without believing it. You can use it to make a living and con people out of their money, which is exactly what Paul Big Lie likes to do. And I'm going to show you here in this video. This, is, this video is called, uh, let's see here, what's the title of it? P Pastor Paul Begley explains the flying crucifix aftermath, which we're going to talk about that in another video. But uh, go to here, and, and he talks about defending the Word of God. So let's let's watch this. No, there's no straight. I'm, are you serious? I'm a preacher of the gospel, and I just preach the Word of God. And that day, I was watch it again if you want to. I'm sitting there defending what the Word of God. Because these guys have created these new version, they're going to print this new version Bible, and I'm not against different versions of the Bible that to make simplify it, make it easier for different age groups and different folks. Okay, did you see it there? I'm not against uh, different versions of the Bible that make it easier to understand and everything for different age groups, different people. See, see, that's the same old lie that these new version people over here. I have all these, some of the big popular ones right now. I have them. Okay, I'm not afraid of these new versions. I've been debunking these new versions for many, many years now. There is a major, major problem with these. Okay, these are not the same Bibles as the King James Bible. See, Paul Begley here is perpetuating this lie that's put out by the Vatican. All right, the Vatican is the one that's behind all these new versions. This is a, these are all Roman Catholic. All right, any Bible produced since 1881 is a Roman Catholic Bible based on this text right here all right i'm going to show you the proof of that here in just a minute this is not this these bibles here come from egypt this bible comes from syria all right they're not even from the same part of the world they're based on totally different greek manuscripts so it's not a question of it, it should could, could we make it easier to understand or could you know the the new versions are just worded differently they're different bibles from different parts of the world that's what a lot of people don't understand I didn't understand it when I used to use an NIV. And I had to study this issue, and the Lord showed me the truth about this thing. This Bible, the King James Bible, is from a different part of the world. It is a different Bible. These are not updated King James Bibles. They are Egyptian Bibles. Very important to understand that. Let's get back here and watch a little bit more of this Paul Begley video. I prefer my King James Version 1611. I've had it since I was a little boy. I used when I was uh, seven years old. I had to memorize 200 Bible verses to win a youth group contest. I believe in the Word of God. I understand it, and so if there's other versions, I, I'm not. I don't have a problem with it. You see, lie number two. Okay, first of all, he's saying it's just about updating language, and secondly, another lie that these Vatican uh, hirelings will do. They'll say, I prefer the King James Bible. Uh, your preference has nothing to do with what constitutes God's holy word. All right? I could prefer Playboy magazine over the word of God. That doesn't make Playboy magazine the word of God. All right? Your preferences are not the standard of truth. And yet, if you go back to the very beginning, the very first sin... Mentioned in your Bible, Genesis chapter 3, what did Satan say to Eve? He said, ye can be as God's knowing good and evil. In other words, it was her preference. God said, don't eat of the tree. And she said, I think I will. She preferred to eat of the tree. You see? See how that whole thing works? Your preference does not determine what is the true word of God. The true word of God is determined by where did this thing come from? You go back, these new versions all are traced back to the Vatican. The Vatican has slaughtered millions of Christians down through the centuries. The Vatican that rapes little children into the millions. And they're just constant, constantly covering the thing up. I mean, do you think a church that Jesus Christ founded would perpetually rape children? You know, give me a break. I don't prefer the King James Bible. I believe the King James Bible. 
all right? Because it goes back to Antioch, where they were first called Christians. This is a Syrian Bible. It is not an Egyptian Bible like these over here. Your preference does not determine what Bible is the true Word of God. And this is based, by the way, on over 99% of extant Greek manuscripts. In other words, if you find a Greek manuscript, an ancient Greek manuscript, it'll line up here, not over here. This is less than 1% of all extant Greek manuscripts. Over 5,000 Greek manuscripts extant, they line up here. They line up with the Antioch, the Syrian type reading, not over here. Seems kind of strange that there were this group over here, this Egyptian group, very few people are even bothering to make copies of it. You know, there are very few of these manuscripts even in existence that line up with this text type over here. This one over here, people making copies into the thousands. I wonder why that would be. Hmm. Could it be because the Christians were over here on this side and not over there? The people over here make them fancy, you know, and, uh, you know, on sheepskin and all this other stuff, you know, and they display them and, and they put them in glass cases just like the, the Vatican does today. Sacred relics, sacred scripture, just don't read it very much because it exposes them. But let's get back to what Paul Big Lie says here. Unless... You take the blood of Christ out of the Bible, unless. Okay. He said, I'm not against these new versions, unless you take the blood of Christ out. You just heard him say it. Okay. Unless you take the blood of Christ out. All right. So let's look up here in the King James Version. We're going to go to Colossians 1.14. Colossians 1.14 in your King James Bible. And there are many, 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 many more that I could show you. But we'll just go here. We have Colossians 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Through his blood. Here we have the New American Standard Version. Okay? This is a upward this youth movement or something like this. Look out for youth movements too, by the way. New American Standard Bible, Lockman Foundation. Okay. There you see, nice little pentagram on the front cover there. But uh, let's go to Colossians 1.14. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. Okay, here we go. Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, what about through his blood? Why is it in, why isn't it in there? Well, because the Egyptian text removed it. They took out through his blood. You say, is this an accurate translation? Oh yeah, this is an accurate trans translation of the wrong Egyptian Greek text. How about the uh, Common English Bible? Came out a few years ago. This thing actually had Jesuits and Roman Catholics Jesuits are an order of Roman Catholic priests, very, very dangerous um, satanic order of Catholics. I mean, there are, there are Catholics that are against the Jesuits. I mean, they're a very wicked group. But there were actually Jesuits sitting on the translation committee of this thing and Roman Catholics. You can watch my video on that for more information. But uh, let's go to Colossians 1.14. A lot of people try to say that the Bible version issue is not important. It's not. It doesn't matter which Bible you read. Uh, if you have such a low opinion of God's Word, you might want to check and see if you're saved. Okay? So here we have Colossians chapter 1 and verse 14. He set us free through the Son and forgave our sins. There's verse 15. Uh, where'd the blood go? Where did the blood go? Paul Begley says that he's, he's you know, only against the, the new versions that take the blood out. Well, there's two of them that did. How about the old standby here, the old uh, modern evangelical Bible, the NIV. Colossians 1, verse 14, and this is the new one. This is the 2011 uh, NIV right there. 2011. Colossians 
chapter 1 and verse 14. Whoop. Where are we at here? In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Again, they take out the blood. Paul Big lies against Bible versions that take out the blood. He just doesn't tell you which ones that they are. He's not part of a Catholic conspiracy to cover up truth or anything. We mustn't believe in conspiracy. That's the realm of crazy people. How about the uh, extremely stupid version? I mean, oh, excuse me, English Standard Version, ESV, Colossians 1, chapter 1, and verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The blood's gone. How about the message? One of the most idiotic satanic versions that's ever come out. This thing doesn't, it's not even from any Greek text. It's just from the warped mind of uh, Eugene Peterson. Colossians chapter 1. Let's see here. Okay, Colossians. There's a book of Colossians chapter 1. And this these things are so hard to follow. It, it's so weird. God rescued... This is verses 13 and 14. I can't tell where the one ends and the others begin, so I'll just read 13 and 14. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. Kind of interesting because, uh, you know, God rescued us from dark dungeons. Uh, William Tyndale, Bible translator, that uh, translated from the received text, not the Egyptian text, uh, he actually died... Uh, he spent the rest of his life, or he was caught, he was trying to translate the Bible. He had gotten the New Testament done, trying to get the Old Testament done. And they caught him, framed him up, you know, and everything else. Caught him, put him in a dark dungeon, and he spent over a year there before they took him out and strangled him and then burned him at the stake. The Catholics, you know, the Catholics that are behind this over here. All these new versions, those Catholics. But it, uh, according to Peterson here, it says that uh, God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. I guess that didn't work out too good for uh, William Tyndale. He set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much, the son who got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. Uh, no... No, uh, you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the blood that was shed on the cross. It's His blood that washed away our sins. It's His blood that brought in the New Testament. Without the shedding of blood is no remission, the Bible says. How about the New Revised Standard Version? Hey, this, this is a good one for old uh, Big Lie. The um, Catholic... Youth Bible. Paul Big Lie is a papist. And I'm going to prove that in another video. Colossians 1, verse 14. Remember, remember, he's not for new versions that take out the blood. Colossians 1, 14. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Here you can see Colossians. Okay, all of these Vatican versions over here take out the blood. You say, well, you still haven't proved that they're from the Vatican. Okay, Nestle Lalande, the Greek text here, Nestle Lalande. You can look up, if you have one of these new versions, look it up in the preface to the thing, and you will see it refers to this Greek text right here, the Nestle Lalande Greek text. This is the 27th edition. Here's the 28th edition, the newest one. Okay, so I'm not just repeating what I heard on some website or some other thing or somebody else, some other King James only nut said this, and I'm just repeating it. I have the original sources. And I've been disproving this whole thing and kicking it for a long time. Okay, here we have the introduction to the Nestle's 27th edition. The text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement, agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their 
the Vatican supervision. Okay? And, you know, you can pause the video there and read the rest of it. So, right there, the Vatican puts this thing up. And I'll show you one other thing here quickly, too. Um, one of the men that sits on the team that puts this thing out is right there. Carlo Maria Martini. That's what the M stands for there. Carlo Martini. Carlo Martini is a Jesuit. So you get a wicked order of Roman Catholics. And by the way, the Jesuits were formed back in the 1500s, the middle of the 16th century there. They were formed to overthrow people getting away from the Vatican, getting away from under, out from underneath the Vatican control, the Protestant Reformation. All right, the Jesuits were formed to make a counter-reformation, to eventually bring all people back under the Roman Catholic wicked harlot system. You say, well, he probably didn't work on the 28th edition, did he? 28th revised edition, Carlo Maria Martini. There he is again. So, Vatican versions. Paul Bigley says... I'm not against these new versions unless they take the blood out. They all do. Why didn't he tell you about that? And he's going to go on here to say about how he's against them too if they take out the Father and the Son. He's talking about this thing of the Wycliffe Bible translators coming out and trying to make Muslim-friendly Bibles, which is really kind of funny because, again, you can study this, Islam comes from Roman Catholicism. You see, Roman Catholicism has set up all these false religions. Study it out, you know. Um, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Let me let me get that real quick here. Right here, I have the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. I'll show it there on the overhead camera. You see it there? Okay. And let me show you here who puts this thing out. Here we have copyright 1985 by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Okay, this is a Jehovah's Witness publication. And who set it up? Talking about the Nestle's text here and everything. And it says about D. Eberhard Nestle and the Spanish Jesuit scholar there. And another Jesuit scholar. Amer. Wait a second. The Jehovah's Witnesses matching the same Greek text that's used by the Vatican? And their edition here is prepared by Jesuits? That's right. And Charles Taze Russell was a Freemason. Freemasonry is tied to the Vatican through the Jesuits. And Joseph Smith of the Mormons was a Mason. You see, Catholicism, part of the Counter-Reformation was to create all these cults and all these sects. And I believe, too, atheism was created by them. All these different things, you know, because Karl Marx was a Mason. He was in, into a bunch of other things. Karl Marx is one of the leading philosophers of atheism, you know, atheistic communism. All these different things, they tie back to the Vatican. You see, the grand conspiracy is create all these different cults all these different daughters of the whore, the harlot, in Revelation chapter 17. And then at the end, you start to bring them back in. And that's what's going on. You're seeing it. It is the formation of the One World Church, and Paul Begley is part of it. He is for the Roman Catholics. This guy is very, very dangerous. Okay? And I can show you here, I'll show you one other thing before we continue. If you go to the Vatican's official home page at YouTube, just Vatican, type that in, you'll see that they have 90,691 subscribers. And Paul Bigli has 59,371 subscribers. So Paul Bigli is almost, he's over half as many subscribers as the Vatican itself. He's reaching a lot of people. But if you go back to the Vatican here and over to the featured channels section, you have 
uh, all these different people here, featured channels, Giovanni Paolo, or whatever. That one there has uh, 7,339 7, subscribers. Radio Vatican, 7,292 subscribers. Uh, Vatican IT, whatever that is, 18,149 subscribers. The Spanish Vatican channel, 22,037 subscribers. The German Vatican channel, 2,776. The French Vatican channel, 3,120 subscribers. The, um, not sure what that is, Lit View. I'm not sure what that is. That might be Russian. I'm not sure. But the they have 484 subscribers. They're not doing too good. And then the, uh, I don't know if that's Chinese or, Chinese or Japanese. I'm not sure. But they have 914 subscribers. So, again, Paul Bigley is influencing far more people than the Vatican in many of these different channels. And he's got a lot more videos going on and things like that. He's getting a lot of views. You know, so who's more dangerous? Paul Begley is a, a hireling, a, a, a whore of the mother of harlots, basically, is what he is. Very dangerous man. But let's finish watching a little bit more of this video here where he's saying about that he's against these new versions, but not really. Let's watch this. You do what these guys were trying to do. And that was this new Bible version in which they wanted to actually take the Father, take the Son, or take the Son of God out of the Word of God. Are you serious? And I was so frustrated with it. And of course, there's the gay Bible now, which I haven't even talked about yet, which is the most horrendous, abominable, that is such a, that's an abomination. Okay, let me stop there for a minute again. He says it's an abomination to have a gay Bible. Uh, well, if you study these new versions, they go soft on the sodomites. And that's the true term there. Sodomite, not gay. Gay is a King James Bible word meaning happy. Okay. Don't go with the modern politically correct terms. Gay. It's sodomite. And these new versions cover up for the sodomites. And they had sodomites sitting on the translation team. And before you say, the King James is a sodomite, King James was not a sodomite. He was married and had eight children. All right. And it's it. Ironically, that lie that came out about King James being a sodomite came out 20 years after King James's death by, guess who? A Jesuit. So we go back to that again. But anyhow, let's continue. But so is taking the father the Son, the Son of God, out of the out of the very wording of the Word of God. It's an abomination. And it's be, they're doing it because they don't want to be offensive to Muslims. Folks, you're not the Bible wasn't written for Muslims. It's written for everybody to believe in the one message that Christ is the King of Kings, and it's Jesus who's the Lord of Lords. And he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. And I was defending the Word of God. And all right, that's about enough of that. You know, and he goes into the thing of why the crucifix fell down, and which we're going to talk about that in another video, what the crucifix is, the origin of it, and everything else, and the fact that it is the most satanic uh, symbol on the planet. There's nothing more satanic than a crucifix. But the whole thing is, I'm defending the Word of God. I'm defending the Word of God. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't define what the Word of God is. These liars never do. They'll say, I prefer the King James Bible, and I'm not against these new versions. They're just trying to update. If somebody wants to have one that's updated, I mean, I don't use one, but they can use one. See, it's all preference. It's all ye can be as gods. That's what this whole thing is. What is the standard? That is the main issue facing Christians today. What is your standard of absolute truth? You say, well, whichever Bible I prefer, then you are the standard of absolute truth. Think about that. If you do not have a standard, and this one has been around for 400 years now, 400-year-old standard, 
You can go back and read a book that was written in the 1800s and they're quoting out of this King James Bible. And you can have fellowship with them from way back then. And, you know, this one here dates the whole way back to the early Christians in Antioch. Where does it say about early Christians meeting in Egypt? You know, oh wait, Paul was taken on a prison ship to go to his trial from a boat that was from Alexandria. And, and there was a, men from Alexandria that stoned Stephen to death. So, you know, I guess those are good places or, you know, good references to Egypt in the first century. Sure, you know. You better use the King James Bible. Uh, I used an NIV for 15 years and I was lost that entire time. You know, I thought for a long time I was saved, but upon, you know, further research and further study of the Word of God, I wasn't saved. You know, I had good moral convictions and stuff like that, but that doesn't save you. I had a profession, but there was really no change in my life. I wasn't a new creature in Christ Jesus. And it was finally when I came to a point where I realized, hey, I have nothing in common with the people in this book. Not a thing. And I had a lot of questions. And I called out to God for wisdom. I said, God, you know, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. I need to know. I want to know. And that was when my whole life changed. When I truly came to God as a broken sinner and I said, God, I need to know. I need, I need to be saved. I need to know that I'm saved. I don't want to do this guesswork anymore and maybe and well, you know, probably and I'll just keep going to different church buildings and stuff like this trying to find the right one that suits me and I'll find the right Bible that suits me. I didn't want my own preferences anymore. I wanted God to tell me what to do. And when I started to read the King James Bible, everything changed in my life. Everything. Paul Begley is a liar. And do not be deceived into thinking that this man is somehow King James only because he reads out of the King James Bible. He is not. And when he stands up, you can stand up and say, I'm against these versions that, that take out the blood and take out the Father and the Son and everything. But if you're not telling people what those versions are, what good did it do for you to even say that you're against them? See? It's ridiculous. Don't watch Paul, don't watch Paul Begley, okay, the guy's a deceiver. He's a liar. A very, very wicked, wicked man. And he is a closet Catholic. Watch our video on that, which is going to be coming out right after this one. Thank you very much for watching. Stay away from this guy.